He does not retain his anger forever, because he delights in mercy. He will again have compassion upon us. He will turn our iniquities on our foot. He will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. He will show faithfulness to Jacob and mercy to Abraham. As you have sworn to our fathers from the days of old. The word of the Lord. To God. The Lord is compassionate and gracious. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all within me is holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and never forget all his benefits. It is the Lord who forgives all our sins, who heals every one of your ills, who redeems your life from the grave, who crowns you with mercy and compassion. The Lord is compassionate and gracious. He will not always find fault, nor perceive his anger forever. He does not treat us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our faults. The Lord is compassionate and gracious. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so strong is mercy for those who fear him. As far as the earth as far as the east is far from the east, as far as the east is far from the west, so far from us does he remove our transgressions. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Glory. Against heaven and before you, 
I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your higher servants. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was yet at a distance, his father saw him and had compassion, and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat and make merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and is found. And they began to make merry. Now his elder son was in the field, and he came and drew near to the house. He heard music and dancing, and he called one of the servants and asked what this meant. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he has received him safe and sound. But he was angry and refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him. But he answered his father, Behold, these many years I have served you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you never gave me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But when this son of yours come, but when this son of yours came, who has devoured your living with harlots, you killed for him the fatted calf. And he went to him, and he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to make merry and be glad, for this your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus. The key to understanding the story of the prodigal son is to bear in mind that Jesus gave this story in defense of his association with those whom the Pharisees and their scribes described as sinners. It is true that birds of the same feather flock together, but in the case of Jesus, it was different. While eating with Matthew and the tax collectors, Jesus said, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. The story of the prodigal son shows us the depth of God's compassion. As one great man said, God is never tired of forgiving us. We are the ones who become tired of asking for forgiveness. God is the Father who takes more joy in seeing the sinner repent than in seeing the sinner perish. God is the Father who waits patiently for the return of his lost son despite what the boy did in the past. As Michael tells us in today's first reading, God does not retain his hunger forever because he delights in mercy. He will again have compassion on us. He will tread our iniquities on that foot. He will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. Micah chapter 7, 18 to 20. Like the prodigal son, we often think the grass is greener in the neighbor's lawn. We feel that God's commandments are a burden. 
and we assume that we will be happier elsewhere. But when we get, but all we get in the end is sorrow, tears, and regrets. There is nothing we gain from living a life of sin. Nothing. You will think that you are being deprived right now, serving God, keeping His commandment. You look at others and you say, Oh, I wish I can be like these other people. I wish I can have all these things they have. But in truth, just that the prodigal son felt that there was something to gain outside of his father's house. And he left. There is actually nothing to gain outside of God's presence, outside of keeping God's commandments. Don't look at people who are living in sin because all you get from sin is sorrow, tears, and regret. As the Paul clearly states, the only reward for sin is death. No wonder the father said to the other brother, This your brother was dead and is now alive. He was lost and is found. As we say in the stations of the cross, no matter what my past has been, I can begin anew. God is inviting us today to rise from where we are falling, to pick up our cross again. To say with the prodigal son, I will arise and go to my father. Perhaps you haven't been to the sacrament of confession for a very long time. Today is another opportunity that you will arise and go to your father. Examine your heart and make a firm purpose of amendment and return to God. May God bless his words in our hearts. May God give us the grace never to be tired of asking for mercy. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Those for baptism, infant baptism, parents and sponsors, please come forward. to your child. Purity. Mary. What do you ask of God's church for purity and Mary? You have asked to have your children baptized and doing so you are certain responsibility of training them in the practice of the faith. It would be your duty to bring them up to keep God's commandment as Christ taught us by loving God and our neighbors. Do you clearly understand what you are undertaking? Are you ready to help sponsors? Are you ready to help the parents? of these children in their duty as Christian mothers and fathers. Purity, Mary, the Christian community welcomes you with great joy. In his name, I claim you for Christ our Savior by the sign of the cross, and I trace the cross on your forehead and invite your parents and godparents to do the same. Let us rise. My brothers and sisters, let us ask our Lord Jesus Christ to look lovingly on these children who are to be baptized, on their parents and godparents, and on all the baptized. By the mystery of your death and resurrection, 
Teach these children in light. Give them the new life of baptism and welcome them into your holy church. We pray, O oh Lord. Through baptism and confirmation, make them your faithful followers and witnesses to your gospel. We pray, O oh Lord. Lead them by a holy life to the joys of God's kingdom. We pray, O oh Lord. Make the life of their parents and godparents examples of faith to inspire these children. We pray, O oh Lord. Keep their families always in your love. We pray, O oh Lord. Renew the grace of our baptism in each one of us. We pray, O oh Lord. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, Saint John the Baptist, Saint Peter and Saint Paul, Saint Agatha, all you saints of God, let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, you sent your only Son into the world to cast out the power of Satan, spirit of evil, to rescue man from the kingdom of darkness, to bring him into the splendor of the kingdom of light. We pray for these children, set them free from original sin, make them temples of your glory, and send your Holy Spirit to dwell within them. We ask this through Christ our Lord. We now anoint you with the oil of salvation. In the name of Christ our Savior, may he strengthen you with his power who lives and reigns forever and ever. My dear brothers and sisters, let us now ask God to give these children new life in abundance through water and the Holy Spirit. Father, you give us grace through sacramental signs which tell us of the wonders of your unseen power. In baptism, we use your gift of water, which you have made the rich symbol of the grace you give us in this sacrament. At the very dawn of creation, your spirit breathed on the waters, making them the wellspring of all holiness. The waters of the great flood, you made a sign of the waters of baptism that made an end of sin and a new beginning of goodness. Through the waters of the Red Sea, you led Israel out of slavery to be an image of God's holy people, set free from sin by baptism. In the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Spirit. Your son will that water and blood should flow from his side as he hung upon the cross. After his resurrection, he told the disciples, Go out and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Father, look now with love upon your church and unseal for her the fountain of baptism. By the water of the Spirit, give to the water of this font the grace of your son. You created man in your own likeness, cleansed him from sin in a new birth to innocence by water and the Spirit. We ask you, Father, with your Son, to send the Holy Spirit upon the water of this font. May all who are buried with Christ in the death of baptism rise also within to newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. My dear parents and Godparents, you have come here to present these children for baptism by water and the Holy Spirit. By water and the Holy Spirit, they are to receive the gift of new life from God, who is love. On your part, you must make it your constant care to bring them up in the practice of the faith. See that the divine life which God gives them is kept safe from the poison of sin to grow always stronger in their heart. If your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, renew now the vows of your own baptism. Reject sin. Profess your faith in Christ Jesus. This is the faith of the church. This is the faith in which these children are about to be baptized. 
Do you reject Satan and all his words and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. We may be seated. Is it your will that purity should be baptized in the faith of the church which you have all professed with you? Huh? Purity, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Mary, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has freed you from sin and given you a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and welcomed you into his holy people. In our anoint you with the chrism of salvation, as Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king, so may you live always as members of his body, sharing everlasting life. Purity and Mary, you have become new creation and have clothed yourselves in Christ. See in this white cloth the outward sign of your Christian dignity. With your family and friends to help you by word and example, bring that dignity unstained into the everlasting life of heaven. Amen. Receive the light of Christ. Parents and God parents, this light is entrusted to you to be kept on it brightly. These children of yours have been enlightened by Christ. They are to walk always as children of the light. May they keep the flame of faith alive in their hearts. When the Lord comes, may they go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus made the deaf hear and the dumb speak. May you so touch your ears to receive his word and your mouth to proclaim his faith to the praise and glory of God the Father. You have put on Christ. In him you have been baptized. Amen. Amen.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through these sacred gifts, we pray, O Lord, may our redemption yield its fruits, restraining us from unruly desires, and leading us onward to the gift of salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you are giving your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that free from this other affection, they may so deal with the things of this passing world, as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, Holy, Holy. Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the name of your Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this place to pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them that they do God, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Augustine, our Pope, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who are falling asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who are pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, I will be your name, Lord, King of 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we are with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Oh, Sakha, let's 
Let us pray. May your divine sacrament, O Lord, which we have received, fill the inner depths of our hearts, and by its working mightily within us, make us partakers of its grace. Through Christ our Lord. Uh, members of the parish pastoral council, please uh, be reminded that our meeting starts this morning, 8 o'clock. Our meeting for the first quarter of 2021 is today by 8 a.m. The next meeting will be second quarter of the month, second quarter of 2021, and perhaps that meeting will be in uh, June in June or July. Please, uh, members of the council, let us be present. Tomorrow, first Sunday of the month, uh, we shall be having only one Mass. And during the Mass, we shall be having the first scrutiny. We shall be having the first scrutiny uh, for candidates of ROCIA. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. May the ears of your mercy be open, O Lord, to the prayers of those who call upon you, and that you may grant what they desire. Have them ask what is pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you all, both now and forever. Go forth, the Mass is ended.